The price decline in the metals over the past week has no doubt felt bad for many in the precious metals community. In fact, I'd go further to say that the price decline over the past three years has felt very discouraging. Many were attracted to the precious metals in 2011 after a fairly tremendous increase in prices, and had not yet experienced the periodic corrections and valuations that always happen at the end of an extended run. I would like to encourage new metals investors by shedding some light on what happened over the past three years. Let's take a look at this chart. Focus first on the orange line. This is the Continuous Commodity Index. It is an index of 17 different industrial commodities and is a very reliable indicator of general price trends. It's much more reliable than the government's Consumer Price Index. I start this chart in April of 2011 because that is when the Continuous Commodity Index hit a peak and started a three-year decline. I have also normalized the index to start at 100 in April of 2011 to show the total price decline on a percentage basis. Right now, it is 32% below where it was in April of 2011. Does this mean that the value of all of the important industrial commodities, the basic building blocks of modern day society, are worth 32% less than they were in 2011? No, of course not. The commodities are still worth today exactly what they were worth in 2011. Maybe not in dollar terms, but in actual usefulness. What has changed is that your dollar can buy 32% more of them today than your dollar could three years ago. Even oil, shown here in red, has declined in price by about 21%, meaning that your dollars can buy 21% more oil now than they could just three years ago. In other words, you got a fairly uh, hefty pay raise over the past three years and probably didn't even realize it. If you want more proof of this, just look back at the U.S. dollar index. It was about 72 in April of 2011, and now it stands at close to 85. This is an 18% increase in the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar relative to other currencies, namely the euro. Now let's focus on the precious metals. Again, I've normalized all of the prices to start at 100% in April of 2011. I'll start with gold. Gold has declined in price by 18%. This doesn't mean that gold has become less valuable. Gold will actually buy 3% more oil than it did just three years ago, and it will buy 14% more raw commodities than it did three years ago. In other words, the gold holder has actually seen his wealth increase, just not by as much as the dollar holder, who can now buy 32% more commodities than just a few years ago. Platinum hasn't done quite as well as gold. It is down in price 25%, but it can still buy more industrial commodities than it could three years ago. So you can see, gold and platinum have done their job and preserved the actual wealth of the holder. So the best way to look at the last three years, if you were a gold or platinum holder, was that you just missed out on a speculative opportunity to hold the dollar. There was no way to easily predict the strength in the dollar ahead of time, and so no reason to have expected it to climb. So don't beat yourself up over the move. Long term, the strength of the dollar will probably give way to weakness. Palladium and silver are a different story. Palladium is up 6% from three years ago in U.S. dollar terms. It has been the clear winner. A person who held palladium can buy nearly 40% more commodities than he could three years ago. I will argue on the next slide that palladium is now highly valued, and while it might continue to increase in price, the odds are that in the long term it will not do as well as the other metals. Silver, having declined by 58% in price since April of 2011, really sticks out on this chart like a sore thumb. A person who held silver starting in 2011 not only has suffered the emotional trauma of seeing his or her dollar price decline, but has also suffered a real 26% decline in real purchasing power as measured by the Continuous Commodity Index. I will show on the next slide that this is actually a normal correction in silver's valuation. Silver, in 2011, was actually very richly valued and was due for a correction. When this correction in real value was paired with the short-term bull market in the dollar, the result was a very significant drop in price. The odds were against silver, 
in 2011, as I'll show on the next chart. But the correction, at least in valuation, is nearly over. The dollar bull may continue, but I don't expect silver to continue losing val value relative to the other commodities for much longer. So let's go to a long-term valuation chart, and I will show you why. Here is the chart that I like to use to value the metals. I use oil as my basis because it's the world's most important commodity, and we have lots of data for it. I'm considering adding a chart based on the Continuous Commodities Index, but that will have to come later. What I have done is to plot the purchasing power of an ounce of gold, 63 ounces of silver, 0.8 ounces of platinum, and 2.4 ounces of palladium in terms of oil going back to the year 1968. For the most part, the purchasing power of these quantities of the metals is range-bound. When only 10 barrels of oil can be purchased, the metal can be viewed as relatively cheap, while if 25 barrels of oil or more can be purchased, the metal can be viewed as relatively expensive. I've done many videos showing the statistics, and so while I don't have time to go into the theory here, I'd encourage anyone interested in getting more details to go back and watch my earlier videos. There have been times in the past where these metals values went into extreme bubble territory, such as silver in 1978 to 1980, and palladium in the few years around 2000. But these were fairly short-lived events and very painful for those who bought these metals at these times. We can, see, we can see that in April of 2011, which was the start of the trends on the previous chart, gold, platinum, and palladium were in the lower half of the channel. This meant that while they weren't the bargains that they were from the year 2002 to 2006, they also weren't extraordinarily expensive. Silver, on the other hand, was quite rich, richly valued and was due for a correction. So, when the dollar unexpectedly started to strengthen in the year 2011, silver started to tank in price. Hard. The severity of the drop was the combination of dollar strength as well as the valuation of silver correcting. Palladium moved in the other direction. It continued its valuation increase. And as you can see, palladium now is in the upper end of its valuation channel. It may have some room to continue to increase in value, and momentum is certainly on its side, but the odds of it doing well longer term are against it. So buyer beware. We can see that the other three precious metals are very attractively valued right now. So if you didn't buy in the years leading up to 2006, now is your chance. I'd advise against selling at this point. The metals may continue to decline in real value, but the odds are against them going down much further, at least in real value terms. In dollar terms, they might go down. It's hard to tell. There is much more upside, I think. Now, none of this is to say that the strength in the dollar won't continue. It very well might. There was no way to anticipate the strength in the dollar over the past few years. In fact, there was every reason in the world to believe that the bottom would drop out for the dollar. I sold most of my silver in 2011 and bought gold with it. In hindsight, it would have been much better to hold the dollar, but there was no way to know that in advance. And I still see no reason for the dollar to keep appreciating in value, and I will personally continue to stick with the metals. But I could very well be wrong, and the dollar could just keep going up. So, if you want to hold the dollar while waiting for further commodity price weakness, then by all means feel free to do so. Just remember, it's a speculation. With interest rates as low as they are, and with the amount of currency printed by the Federal Reserve over the past few years, the dollar should inevitably weaken by a great deal, and the change in valuation might be quite sudden. So the dollar holder may find that one day it will be impossible to convert those dollars back into anywhere near the amount of metal that can be obtained for them right now. And that's the funny thing about precious metals. Once the price of them starts to rise quickly, the supply of them dries up. I personally think that staying in the metals now, with the exception of palladium, is the best bet. So let's go to a very high-level overview summarizing what I think is likely to happen over the next five to ten years. In the upper left-hand chart, I show how I expect silver and short-term treasury bonds to perform relative to gold over the next five to ten years. Based upon the low valuation of gold 
and current low interest rates. I expect the short-term treasury holder to do worse than the gold holder to the tune of 9.5% per year. Again, I won't go into detail as to how I came up with 9.6%. The details are in my earlier videos. Silver I expect to do slightly better than gold. Silver should appreciate by about 1% per year more than gold. There will be ups, there will be downs, but on average, silver should outperform. Unfortunately, the rate of outperformance will likely not adequately compensate for the higher spreads an investor will pay for owning silver, and it certainly won't compensate for large VAT taxes. All the same, if you can't afford to buy an ounce of gold at a time, silver is a pretty good bet. In the upper right-hand graph, I show how high interest rates would need to be for short-term bonds to be a good holding right now. At the current gold-to-oil ratio of 13.3, we need an interest rate of at least 10% to make short-term paper a good bet. Right now, a person can get half a percent in savings bonds. So while short-term dollar-denominated bondholders may do well in the short term, I think the odds are stacked against them. In the lower left graph, I deal with platinum and palladium. I expect platinum to outperform gold by about 2% per year over the next 5 to 10 years. Platinum is nice and compact, like gold, and has low spreads. So platinum here is a very good buy. A person probably can't go very wrong by having some platinum in their portfolio. The only potential downside is in the event of a monetary reset. Gold is viewed as a traditional money and is much more widely held by the rich and influential of the world than platinum. So if gold re-enters the monetary system, it will certainly do much better than platinum. Palladium is likely to underperform gold by about 5% per year over the next 5 to 10 years. And sure, it may continue its valuation rise, momentum is certainly in its favor, but there's no way to know for sure whether the trend will continue, and when it might reverse, and possibly reverse hard. From a valuation perspective, palladium is really not a good buy right now. And in the lower right graph, I show where the metals are currently in their valuation channels. Gold, silver, and platinum right now are good values as long-term holdings. And I would like to stress the words long-term here. If you're buying now, expecting this to be the perfect bottom, don't be surprised if the metals continue to weaken. With today's oil price, it would not be surprising to me for gold to drop to $920 per ounce, silver to drop to $14.50 per ounce, platinum to drop to $1,150 per ounce, and palladium to drop to $380 per ounce. If the dollar continues to strengthen, then the prices of the metals might fall even further. But this needs to be weighed against the possibility that the metals rise in value to my current price targets of $2,300 per ounce for gold, $36 per ounce for silver, $2,860 per ounce for platinum, and $955 per ounce for palladium. Of course, if the bottom drops out for the dollar, then any dollar-denominated uh, price target will be meaningless. The point I'm trying to make with this video is that the price movements that we saw in the past week are nothing unusual. The price action that we've seen over the past three years is quite understandable and nowhere near tragic. All that has happened is an unexpected rise in the value of the dollar. If you held the right metals, you didn't really lose any wealth. All you lost is a speculative opportunity. There was no way to know ahead of time that this would happen. If you were a silver investor who bought in at the highs, don't despair. The worst is behind you at this point. Use this as an opportunity to become a better investor. If you learned from this, then you will more than make up for the, uh, the loss in the future. Consider the losses as tuition. Now is the time to be a buyer. There is one last thing that I would like to emphasize, and that is that the value of the dollar is truly arbitrary. Long term, it will go down. That is almost guaranteed. Short term, though, it can appreciate quickly and for no good reason. This makes being in debt a very dangerous proposition, even when interest rates are low.